Hi, and welcome to The Hoax. I am Chris Hoke, writer for Cowboy and Lucky for Red Sea TV. This is... Mark Hoke, uh, composer, movie enthusiast. And what else? You said, and, oh, and sometimes writer. And sometimes writer. Yes. It's okay, we said that in the rehearsal. I had to make you say it again. The cat's in the way of our board. We can't see what we're talking about, cat. Go away, cat. All right, first subject, the 3D, the future of movies when it comes to 3D. How will 3D affect the future of movies? Um, I, I think where it starts is uh, you're going to see some attendance issues because they're obviously trying to create an incentive to get more butts in the seats. Uh, so I think it's a bit of a fad right now. Uh, I don't think long term it will be here to stay, but for right now it certainly uh, is what's hot and what's getting people to, to, to come to theaters what maybe haven't in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I see the future of movies being more of a, uh, a, a merger of like fast food entities with yeah. some movie uh, houses and that way you have an evening experience with dinner and a show. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think uh, uh, um, the, the future of 3D when it comes to movies depends on the, the, at home, the home theater experience. If people are buying the stuff at Best Buy and buying at Walmart to bring home 3D TVs, like the few that are out on the market. If they're buying that and bringing it home and watching it, then it's here to stay and it'll just get bigger. Problem is, like you and me have talked about before, it's all poorly executed. Other than Avatar, which I'm not a fan of Avatar by any stretch of the imagination, but technically it was well executed. No other movie since has executed it that well. And if they don't start, I don't see how it'll stay around because everybody I know is like, eh, it's 3D. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's backfired is in, in the studio's rush to put out 3D product, they've done all this 2D conversions over to 3D, and uh, it's, it's, it's been a disaster as far as I'm concerned. Everyone that I've seen that was a conversion, you could tell yeah. there was nothing special about the 3D presentation. No. And it certainly didn't justify the extra cost yeah. for the ticket. No, th what, three bucks a pop more? Right. Now, IMAX 3D is everything it's advertised. IMAX 3D is brilliant. And if there's some way the, the, the local multiplex can get that technology in there, then it's here to stay. Yeah. But the 3D that you see at your local multiplex it's just not worth it to me. It's not worth it to me. Mm. Not for my book. All right, next subject. The biggest pet peeve at the theater. So what's your biggest pet peeve when you go sit down and watch a movie in the theater? What bugs you the most? Well, right now it would have to be the, the glowing cell phones, you know, whether they're on text, whatever they're doing, and that just that glow from their, their monitor on their cell phone is distracting. Right. Uh, yeah, it, I have uh, uh, was actually had told somebody to turn theirs off one time. In the, during the middle of the movie because you look at the big, you know, the reason it's dark. The reason the theater is dark, folks, is so the only thing you can see is the screen. Right. When you turn on your monitor on your phone, mm -hmm. it's distracting the human eye because all of a sudden, oh, another light source, and you go to it. Right. And so since you said that one, I'll say my biggest peeve is the laser pointer. Uh, we ha we have, I'm surprised that's back. I know. It's the lowest, scummiest, most vile thing someone can do. But it's out there and people do it, and I have no, I have no idea why they do it. All right, hottest actress working in wait uh, in, in in movies now. Who's the hottest actress your, for your book? Now, when you, now if we're talking about hottest, are we are we talking about hot as yeah. in terms of uh, talent or hot and as in sexy? Sexy. Sexy. Oh well. Hottest actress working. Man, I know mine. Go ahead. Find well, okay, one. Angelina Jolie is 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 like my big time fetish chick. But I will not go there, just to be a little different, because everybody likes her. Mm. Amy Adams, the redhead. You know. Mm. Oh God, I love Amy Adams to death, man. Mm. Well, I, I I certainly have I've, I've been kind of using Jessica Alba as kind of a, yeah. a fail safe for uh, the yeah. last number of years. Yeah. But I would also like to send a little love to Michelle Rodriguez because Michelle whatever Rodriguez. she has going on, it works for me. Yeah. So I would certainly yeah. send a lot of love her way. If she's always evil or she dies in every movie. And they need to stop that just yeah. once, you know. Why can't she do like you know yeah. Basic Instinct three? Well, yeah, there's an idea. Yeah. Why can't she ride off in the sun with me? 
Exactly. You know, happy ending. Everyone's happy. And speaking of the ride off of the sunset with you, we are at our first break. So we'll be back. We'll be back. And we're back. The hoax. So, next topic. How do you watch movies? Meaning, Netflix, on demand, pay per view, go down the rental store and rent it. How do you watch movies these days? Well, I'm, I'm kind of old school, me personally. I, I, I like to go to to the video stores, seek out what I'm interested in. Um, what about Redbox? I haven't I've done, never, I've never I've never done Red, Redbox either. It's very popular. I've never done it either. I mean, I think it's only second to uh, Netflix. Yeah, and it's 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 very popular. If not more, I don't know. I haven't seen the data on that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I like the video store because you get the browse. I, I like, like actually yeah. going the enjoyment of going to a video store browsing. You get some popcorn while you're there and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're always on the go. We're rush, rush, rush society. Right. Well, I, I can't. I can speak for myself. I like to mix up sometimes. I don't always want to see a new movie. Yeah. I like sometimes. I want to like uh, check out an old film that maybe missed mm -hmm. that got by me. Maybe I've heard about, yeah. and then but then mix it with a new release that I've I didn't get to see at the theaters. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you you miss out on that kind of browsing. I know you could probably go to uh, like Netflix. You have a. A kind of a wish list or viewing list you could put together. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Then, well, Netflix, you, could do you have the uh, your queue. You put stuff in yes. your queue. You can have a bazillion things in your queue, mm -hmm. and you can reorder it. So if something news come out, you can put it at the top of the list and whatever or some you know whatever you want to do. Yeah. I just I don't know. Well, from well, there, uh, there's there are rental places, little rental chains that are literally folding out their tents. And going out of business, uh, so I guess the question to us is: um, mm -hmm. Is that kind of rental going to a rental store? Is that going to go away completely? Well, I think yeah, I mean, apparently so, because all that's left is black blockbuster, except for local ones, except for your local mom and pop ones. That's all that's left right. is blockbuster. Right. But here's here's my thing: um, 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 I would rather go to the movies and see it. I'm one of those people that. I'm so busy, unless I take time to actually go to the theater and see it, it's going to be a while before I catch it. Right. Unless you something I really want to see awful bad, mm. it's going to be a while. I mean, it, it, it won't be a, I don't get the, the new releases often. I mean, how about you? Well, I think you're, you're, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And the older a film gets, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of have to kind of, in a way, talk yourself into yeah. Devoting two hours of your life to see something yeah. like this. Well, like Iron Man two come out this summer. I caught Iron Man two in the theater. Right. And when it comes on video, I'm probably never gonna watch it. I mean, I liked it, but it's not that it's bad. It's just I ain't got time to go back and watch it again. You know. Yeah. So that's kind of how my life is yeah. these days. Yeah, that'll be our next uh, subject one of these days is disappointing sequels. That was one of them. Yeah. <clears throat> but first, yes. What is your favorite sports movie ever? Since the football started, we're only two weeks into the football season. Me and Mark both have the same opinion on sports. We could care less about sports. All we care about is NFL football. Period. Yeah. I, right? Yeah, I, I'm not a sports fan. Uh, I, I love football, and uh, I like to watch women's tennis. But th even then, I'm, I'm lying. I, I just want to see Sharapova play. Yeah, uh, he just so, wants TNA, you know. meaning tennis and but you get the idea. And Anna Cordacoba, right. Yeah. There's the TNA. Tennis and Anna. That's yeah. what TNA Tennis is. and Anna, yeah. Anyway. What's your uh, favorite sports movie ever? Uh, does Phil the Dreams count? I know some people say yeah. it's a fantasy movie. But I would no. say... I would say uh, Who said that? They're high on crack. It's a sports well, movie. Well, you know, when we, you know, long dead baseball stars come out of a cornfield. So, you know. I'm not saying it's not a fantasy movie, but it's a sports movie first. Yeah, sure, I guess so. But yeah, I guess for me, Phil the Dreams... Real Phil Dreams. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it hit me when we talked about this. I don't know if I have one. I mean, the ones I like are always the comedies, like Happy Gilmore. Right. <laughs> and I like the comedy ones, the slapstick ones, Longest Yard and, and Happy Gilmore. I don't know if I have a. Well, what about Bull Durham? I know you used to like that movie. Yeah. I mean, I, I used to, yeah, I like that one. So I'll, yeah, that's probably the closest one would be Bull Durham. But to be honest with you, if I'm going to pop a sports movie in, it's probably going to be Waterboy. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I don't know. Why not? I just, I just. Why not? Those are the kind of sports movies that I dig now. But I like Bull Durham and The Natural was okay. But uh, you know, I don't know. To me, uh, sports movies, sports, or football, and sports are supposed to be fun. So I want the sports movie to be fun. Mm. You know, right? I don't really care about the drama of sports. Yeah, if that well, makes sense. Well, that's just any movie. You're looking for a good story. Yeah. Uh, but I guess segue to our next topic is uh, as much we're as we love time. You want to like keep going? We're over time. Oh, we're over time. Well, we're gonna have to wait. So you'll have to wait. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the hoax. I am Chris, and this is my lovely assistant, Mark. <laughs> I've been demoted. <laughs> Okay, when you, when you, uh, before we got cut off by uh, our our, uh, uh, our break, yes, you were going to mention what? Uh, well, we were talking about sports films earlier. Um, you know, as popular as football is, mm -hmm. why is it there, in my view, a definitive football movie? Now, but, now yeah. Longest Yard, of course, some would say that that is. It was even remade successfully. It was a hit. Yeah, I never saw the old one. I've only seen the new one. Uh, well, I've seen both. Mm -hmm. Both are good movies. I wouldn't call them right. classics. You right. know, I mean, boxing. There's all kinds of boxing movies that are. That There's like yeah, like you know, more great boxing movies than any other sport. Yeah, you got Rocky, and Rocky Raging, Bull. Raging Bull, Gentleman Jim with Errol Flynn. Mm -hmm. These are great movies. Yeah, but no, I mean. People would make their argument of, well, what about uh, The Blind Side now, which is like not even a football movie. I mean, there's like, yeah. they might run yeah. three downs <laughs> right. in the right. whole movie. You can't call that a football movie. Right. Uh, uh, or Jerry Maguire, but it's more about the agent yeah. and his personal life. Yeah. And it's not, not a football uh, It's not really a football it's not movie. It's a football movie. And then, uh, 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 what else? There was... Um, no, oh, there's been like Gridiron Gang, and there's been uh, sure the comedies like the com Necessary Roughness. Yeah, but that Gridiron Gang was necessarily our comedy. Mm -hmm. It was it's kind of a tweener, I think. But right. I, I haven't even seen all of it, but, uh, uh, but remember the Titans and like Radio and mm -hmm. I don't think they're <laughs> right. Well, Everybody yeah. loves Remember the Titans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we and him hate it. For the only people what I think on Earth. is with that movie? I have no idea what the appeal it's is with Rem Remember the Titans. Biggest turd of all time. People, well, will, biggest, but... people routinely mention that in their top <coughs> 20s. Yeah. And certainly in this community, and I just oh, want to slap them. Yeah, it's the worst piece of ground. I'm a Tennessee Titans fan. I'm a, I was an Oilers fan. I became a Tennessee Titans fan. Right. And it always kills me every year that at some point, if, if the Titans, if the Titans are doing good, they'll mention that movie because of the name Titans, and I just had to roll my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Because I hate that movie. God, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Let's tell them why it sucks, so we can educate the viewers why it sucks. Well, well, the most obvious uh, thing that stands out is, yeah. is is that any any message it wants to send. It has to like put on a big placard neon yeah. sign. Hey, by the way, this is what we're saying. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so offensive in that way. It's yeah. Like, well, how dumb do you think we are? I yeah. Mean, uh, yeah. And and just put pitting that whole period uh, and the things that was going on in that period. It, it, it's it, it was just it's just laying it on very thick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's like. Uh, I hate movies that are just so not subtle with their topic. Right. And, you know, that movie deals, of course, with racism. And, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I give you that, you know, the the real life story of it is, is a cool thing. And I'm glad that it all worked out and mm -hmm. they integrated the schools. So we're not even talking about the politics. We're not even talking about what really happened. I'm talking about it as a movie. As a movie experience. It's like you just put this big, on, big old huge neon sign on your message. Racism is bad. Like, yeah, racism is bad. We all know yeah, that. We know that. Yeah. Can you delve a little deeper into the subject? No, racism is bad. Right. It's like okay, I I agree, but could you be? Yeah. Well, every everything is so very 
Stereotypical. Stereotype. You know, everybody. White, black, black, male, female, little kids. Everyone. Old, just, oh. Yeah, it's just so, and it's very cookie cutter in the way it's in, in the way it's presented, yeah. and 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 you don't really feel that it's really real. No. You, you don't come away feeling like you've got to know these people and have an authentic. Yeah. A, a story told to you. I mean, the, what, like, the worst part of the movie is when the defensive coordinator comes up to Denzel at the end. It's like, Coach, I can't figure this one out. I'm going to need your help. And Denzel comes up with the big defense to win the game or, or whatever. And it's like so like crappy, cheesy. It's like, yeah. come on, Denzel. This is my moment. He basically tells Denzel, this is the moment that I give in and we bond by me giving in to you and, and and respecting that you know basically I'm going to lay down your feet and <laughs> right right you know, it's like Denzel please help me fix this out hey audience wink wink we're bonding yeah we're bonding audience it's like in this moment the color bar is gone it's so crappy yeah you know? and I'm like you know in real life which is why it's so offensive in real life it's nothing that simple no no, that's the yeah, that's the what's so offensive about the movie. Right. You know, it's just oh. And we're back after our uh, tirade. Let's change gears to highest paid actor. Number one is Johnny Depp. Correct. Number two is Ben Stiller. Right. Number three is Tom Hanks. Right. We're talking about actors, not actresses. Yeah. Based on this recent report, right? Yeah. So, are they worth it? Is Johnny Depp worth it? I think absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, here's a guy that will take the script, and he always brings more to the table. Um, he 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 finds little nuggets uh, to make it personal. Yeah. Put a put an identity on each role, mm -hmm. um, and and you know it seems to capture the imagination of audiences worldwide. Right. Well, I like Johnny Depp a lot. Um, he's not one of my top five favorites or anything, but I do have a lot of respect for him. I do like him. Um, I, I, I would like to see him do more uh, challenging stuff. And I mean, the Pirates movies are good, but uh, I mean, I want to see him do some uh, some stuff with some like some you know Scorsese. Like DiCaprio has done a lot of stuff with Scorsese. Yeah, and he does some challenging movies, and, and uh, I'd like to see Depp do more of that. That would be my, that would be my two cents on Depp. But that's got to do with box office. Movies like a bazillion dollars, and what do I know? But <laughs> <laughs> right. Ben Stiller is he worth it? <clears throat> I think so. Uh, he has that, he has that ability to change from straight man to buffoon and go back and forth. Right. And not everybody can do that and still have family appeal. You yeah. Know, it's, you have some comedians who are just too raunchy for families. Yeah. You know, he can he has this ability where he's mixed it up. He can do the, the yeah. raunchy stuff, but he can still pull it back and do Night at the Museum, which has family appeal. And I like him. I like it better. Uh, I'd say, yeah, he's worth it, but I, I like him better when he is the, the funny guy. I mean, like Dodgeball, I think he's just hilarious. Right. And Dodgeball. He doesn't do that a lot anymore. He tends to be like the lead, the straight lead or whatever. Right. You know, and uh, which he's good at. I mean, yeah. he's really good at. It. Right. I wish it. I wish he would do some more screwball stuff. Right. Yeah, you know, where he's the screwball. Well, that that whole franchise. What is it? Meet the parents. Where he kind of yeah. underplays, lets himself be the foil. Yeah. For a lot of <clears throat> other people's yeah. jokes. He's yeah. he's very good at that. He's very good at. It. I just wish he was more. I, I don't know. I just my my one of my personal favorites is the dodgeball character he did. Sure. I just wish he'd do more of that. Yeah. But I mean. I think he's great. I like him. Well, what do you think of Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks is one of those guys that he was on a hot streak, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, Forrest Gump, and then he did St. Bright sure. Run, and and that he did a stretch of movies there. It was just incredible. And uh, he's done more of the, you know, commercial stuff, if you will, of late. Mm -hmm. I, I like it better when he's do doing the more challenging, risky stuff. I mean, Castaway right. was a challenging risky movie on this part. Right. Private Ryan, people forget, it's mainstream now, but when that movie came out, people were like taken aback by it, how bloody it was, right. how realistic it was. So, my, Tom Hanks is a lot like Michael Douglas. When when they do movies that are commercial, 
they're not as good. When they do movies that really are risky and edgy, there's nobody better. Hmm. And that's my thing on Tom Hanks. Well, that's a very good comparison. Uh, I always saw him, in a lot of his roles, he can kind of come off doing the, the James Stewart, everyone likes him, has yeah. a every man appeal. But he's also done the very challenging stuff, like you said, like a Michael Douglas, who who is known for having his best success in the edgier roles. Yeah, 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 <clears throat> absolutely, absolutely. I, I, but that's kind of what I said about Depp. I want to see Depp do more of the edgy roles. So it's kind of, I have a running theme here, I guess. I, yeah. like the, I like the edgy stuff. I don't, I mean, I like mainstream movies, don't get me wrong. I love parkour movies, but also I like to get a healthy diet of edgy, gritty, you know, that 70s era type movie where you're right. really focused on social issues, and mm. but not overtly like, remember the Titans. <laughs> yeah, but but good in a good way, you know. Yeah, I think I think Depp having arrived in the two thousands <clears throat> with the Pirates franchise, uh, I think he's, I think he's more comfortable now doing more of the the more mainstream films. Right. Uh, but I think he will. I, I, he's got he's got so many years of, of being on the top yeah. of this game. I, I think he'll do it. The the edge your stuff. Yeah, I, I look forward to it. Look forward <clears throat> to it. But we're out of time. So thanks for watching this first episode of The Hoax. More to come. We love movies. We'll do some more movie reviews, movie topics, movie. That's all we eat, breathe, and sleep in movies. So I'm Chris. I'm Mark. You got any final thoughts? Join in next week. All right. See you. Bye.